Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and today a little bit about the wireless co-pilot safe to fly system. Now I mentioned this in my not so weekly weekly news last week and a lot of people said yeah we'd like to see that reviewed and the people who make this thing sent me one to review so here it is. Now I've actually filmed this review several times and each time I've decided I wasn't happy with it because well one of the problems was it's very easy to get involved in what this should be rather than what it is. Now I have to say right from the start, this is a very, very straightforward, very simple, very basic piece of telemetry, but it's different. It's significantly different to the way the telemetry in the JRXG8 works. It's different to the way the telemetry on the FreeSky two-way system works because it doesn't use an LCD to give you the information. It talks to you. It has a little voice. See if I can make him talk. Power on. Power off. Here we go. Now that's not a synthesized voice. It's actually a recorded voice, which means it's very clear, very easy to understand. Okay, it's got a bit of a Kiwi accent, but that's about the only downside I can see to it. And the, you know, the, it's pretty accent free really if you're a New Zealander, but there you go. So as I looked further into this thing, I thought, wow, if they'd only done this, and wow, if they'd only done that, and if it had this feature and it had that feature, but then at the end of it all, I thought, well, no, because then it wouldn't be such a simple, elegant, easy to use product. So this review I'm doing with, that in mind. So basically I'm looking at this for what it is, not what it could be. Because, for, to give you an example, now this thing has, let, let me take my screwdriver, I'll show you inside this little box here so you can see what's in it. This is of course the receiver, the piece you hang around your neck on a lanyard. They even provide the lanyard, how nice is that? And it's a simple plastic box held together with four self-tapping screws and you have to undo these screws because if we look inside you will see here we go. It has two, AA, two AAA alkaline batteries. The first thing I thought when I received this was, why are they using dry cell batteries? My goodness, you know, surely they could just have a lithium cell in there or a couple of nickel metal hydrides. But after speaking to the company, they explained to me that, well, it's pretty much all about price. If they put lithium cells in there or nickel metal hydride cells, they have to put a regulator in here, which adds to the price. And then you've got to have a charging circuit, which adds to the price. And before you know it, it's no longer a very cheap system, it becomes an expensive system. So they wanted to produce a low cost system that would deliver results to people uh, in a way that the other RC systems don't. Well, while we've got the top off, let's have a look inside and see what's in this thing. Little speaker there. Now you'll find that without the case on, the speaker is far better. Listen to this. Power on, power off. Now that's much clearer than when it's in this case because there's no grill in the case, it's just a solid plastic case. So this case tends to muffle it a bit. But I wouldn't worry too much about that because you're probably not going to use that speaker. Look, it's got a headphone jack here, or an ear, earplug jack. What you need to do is get yourself a set of earbuds, stick one earbud in your ear, leave the other ear open so you can hear what's going on around you, and then there's no problems. Because let's face it, on a flight line with nitro planes, gas planes, noisy electrics, you wouldn't hear this anyway if it's around your neck hanging around your waist. So. That's a, a nice feature for testing and setting up, but I think if you're going to use it, you're going to use your earbuds. Inside we've got some quad pack ICs, they run on 3.3 volts, which is why there are two alkaline cells in it, which is why it won't run on nickel metal hydride, because alkaline cells are about 1.5, 1.6 volts a pop, so that's enough voltage to run the circuitry. If you put nickel metal hydrides in, they're nominally 1.25 volts per cell, which is a total of only 2.5 volts and this has a low voltage alarm at 2.7 volts so it might work and if you use a lithium cell well it's 4.2 volts fully charged so it'll blow these up so there you go simple solutions to complex problems saving money making it cheaper to build the damn thing construction quality looks pretty damn good it's a nicely laid out board um, it has an inbuilt antenna here on the circuit board which means it's no actual wire hanging out to get snagged or caught very simple very elegant very good now Let's put it back in its little box. As I say, you will have to put dry batteries in. They say they last about 100 hours in normal use, so once a year should be fine. So I guess the complaints I might have had about using dry cells is pretty minimal when you consider that it's going to cost you the price of two AAA alkaline batteries once a year. It's a no-brainer. It really was probably a sensible idea on the part of the wireless co-pilot people. And there you go, that's the box. It's got a button here for the power, which as you heard, makes a little announciation. And when the power is on, there's a little LED in here which flickers occasionally just to let you know. But if you leave it turned on for too long, it'll turn itself off and tell you, which is smart enough. So you won't be wasting those alkaline batteries. Now let's look at the other part. This is the bit that goes in your model. It's a little single circuit board. 
and it's populated mainly on one side, although there is a barometric pressure sensor on the other side, because this has altitude alerts, which is quite good. It'll, if you want to set a ceiling, so if you fly in a place like New Zealand where the maximum flying altitude is 400 feet above ground level, then you can set this up so that it'll alert you at a lower figure. You might want it to alert you at 380 feet. I showed you that on the Free Sky system. When I tested this Free Sky system, I set an altitude alarm on there and you could hear it enunciating the, or basically just beeping actually, because this Free Sky doesn't have voice recordings. Right. So there we go, that's it. Now it comes with a current sensor, it's got a barometric sensor on there and a current sensor. But that's not the sort of current sensor you get with a lot of other gear. Now if you look at a lot of stuff that you buy with telemetry, you get current sensors that look like this. And that's quite a big clunky thing and it's heavy and it's bulky and uh, it plugs in between your battery and your ESC. So, you know, that enables it to measure the current flowing. This is a bit different, you see, because this is designed to slip over the wires or a wire on the power feed from your battery to your ESC. So it's a toroidal current sensor. It fits over one of the leads like that. You've got to be careful to make sure you get the direction right, otherwise it'll be reading negative amps. So in a small model, much lighter, much simpler, much more effective. And brilliant. If you have a larger model and you want to swap them around, you can of course always just make a lead up like this and put the opposite gender on here, put, leave the, leave the uh, sensor on there, and then simply unplug this between the battery and the ESC and move it from model to model along with the transmitter. It's quite simple. Now the transmitter has an antenna, it's just a piece of wire. Simple piece of wire, you're going to run that well away from the rest of your gear if you can. Uh, I think they recommend, they say the range is about 300 meters, 1,000 feet, which is probably enough for most people's flying. Although it probably would be senseless to set your altitude alarm to anything more than a thousand feet then, wouldn't it? Never mind. This lead goes off to your receiver which provides the power to run the board and also it provides a signal so you, instead of just waiting for this thing to hit one of the alarms like a low battery or um, excess altitude, then you can trigger it by flicking a switch on your transmitter and it will send back information, it'll tell you your altitude, your battery state and things like that. Uh, on demand, which is quite good, but it means you have to use a, at least a five channel receiver if you're running a full house system with four servos or four, four channels for your control surfaces. Now, as I say, when I looked at this, I thought, well, what they should have done is, and I mean, one of the things they should have done is, should have put a voltage, a wire out to monitor the voltage of your LiPo pack, because the problem is, this current sensor is fine, but it doesn't tell you how many volts your pack's putting out, it only tells you how many amps it's drawing, and how many milliampere hours it's drawn altogether. And that's, it's quite a cool thing. So you get a 2200 milliampere hour battery, you hook this up, you tell the board this is 2200 milliamp battery, and it'll tell you when the battery's half used. That's when you've used 1100 milliampere hours. Pretty cool, it gives you a really good um, reference. Rather than just giving you a voltage, it tells you how much you've got left. But the problem is, if your battery isn't really 2200, if you're buying it from the one hung low company and it's, they've just taken an 1800 milliampere hour battery and put a 2200 sticker on it, then this will think you've got more than you really have left. Or if your battery is getting old and tired and losing capacity, or heaven forbid, if one of the cells in the battery should fail, then you may find that this is telling you, well, you've got heaps of battery left. But in fact, because it's got a shorted cell, it's just about at the point where it, the whole thing's gonna shut down due to low voltage. So I think they really should have run another wire up you could put on your battery pack to tell you when your LiPo was dangerously low, or at least give you a voltage indication of your LiPo as part of this telemetry feedback. Okay, now that wouldn't have cost much extra money, I really think they should have added that one, but okay, we're looking at it for what it is, not what it could be. So there you go, now I did ask them too why they couldn't just put the sensor here and plug it in, because at the moment you've got to make up that little lead I was talking about with a connector on each end, or um, have a different transmitter for every model in your stable. But they said these things have a bit of a difference in their output. And due to that variance, they actually calibrate each board to the current sensor that they attach to it. So if, they, if you plugged in a different current sensor, it would be inaccurate. So that's a fair enough reason, I suppose, and it's easy enough to work around. So that's basically it. Now there are a few other bits and pieces I didn't like. On the back of the receiver, there's a thing called the bind ID, a little number on the back there, and you've actually got to key that into this. But you've only got three buttons, so it's a real kludgy operation. Now, I think they normally come pre-bound, but if you've got one of these and 10 models and 10 of these, then you're going to have to do a lot of farting around pushing buttons. It'd be nice if they'd had some kind of easy bind system, but, you know, as I say, that's not what it is. It's not that system. So there you go. Now, I think the next thing, the next part of the review, what we'll do is we'll plonk this in my AXN and we'll give it a bit of a fly and see how well it works, see how, whether it 
works as advertised, because that's obviously very important. Now the AXN has a four channel receiver, so I'll put it in the alarm mode, basically, so it'll just tell me when the battery's getting low, when I've reached my ceiling altitude, or if something else happens. And then I'll put an eight channel receiver in the AXN, we'll fly it up and we'll just have the on-demand telemetry bit working. But at the moment, the wind, well, the summer's gone, it's disappeared, so I'm gonna have to wait for a better day to do some flying. I don't have an observer here anyway, so uh, in the next few days, you'll see the part two of this review where we'll take this, throw it in a plane, listen to this, see if it works. But so far I've got to say that, yeah, it's well made. It's designed to a price point and to provide a level of functionality, which I think most people will find useful. I'll give you my out of tens once I've tested it in the air. Thank you for watching. Any questions on the bottom of the video, please, as usual. Any comments, the same. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe so you can get to part two. I'll remind you, or YouTube will remind you. And thank you for watching RC Model Reviews.